so here's your about page and and this has as we see general corporate information and right there it's the 2016 integrated report it'd be great if you kind of explain how the report fits into your other reporting and you know um what got you started uh on all this yeah thank you and it's good to be here um there was a little circuitous journey for us and honestly a little random but it goes back really to the I think fairly close to the beginning of the project um, in the Paul Druckmann days. Um, and we, I just literally in my building ran into John Edelman from Edelman Public Relations with whom I went to uh, literally kindergarten. And he's their chief sustainability officer. Um, and we got started talking and he's very passionate about it. And um, he just, you know, we started talking about sustainability things because that was something I had gotten interested in. Now, I'm a lawyer, why am I doing that? Um, it was because it, I, I just always felt like this idea of broad sustainability was really helpful in terms of thinking about um, why companies last a long time. Because we have a 250 year history and we always talk about that and are very proud of it. And then, but you know, obviously you see a lot of companies stumble badly and a lot bigger companies than mine stumble badly. And you know, everybody talks about it. They can be out of business, you know, pretty quickly if they do. And so I was just always interested in sort of the idea of, you know, what keeps an organization literally to sustain itself and a lot more broad than just the kind of, you know, old fashioned, you know, when people heard sustainability, it was more about the, you know, environmental peace or something like that. So we had started thinking about using sustainability as a way to talk about our long-term success and all the pieces that have to go into it. And then John just said, you know, he'd heard about this kind of integrated reporting approach, which I really hadn't heard of myself. And so started looking into it. And it, you know, in a more disciplined way than we had been thinking about it, that spoke to the same idea of long-term value creation and all the pieces that go into it. And, you know, sort of a good way to think about it, which again, we knew we wanted to think about it like that and we were using sustainability as a way to do that. And this just felt like a really good way to talk about it. So that was one thing that was compelling. Another thing that was compelling, even though, you know, I, as a lawyer, I shouldn't be saying things like this, but you know, our 10K was wildly boring. I mean, <laughs> That's I knew, okay, you can say that. <laughs> you know, nobody in his or her right mind would ever want to pick the thing up. It, you know, and for most US companies, it's really just a legal document because you have to do it. And you know, they're, they're impossible to read. Um, the type is small, there are no pictures. You know, it's just a totally inaccessible document. And I always felt like, actually in our place, the best information about our company is in the 10K. So actually the content was pretty good, but it looked as bad as everybody else's. And, you know, and it was, you know, just more of a pain in the butt thing for everybody to have to do every year, which, but we spend a lot of time and money on it and a lot of people. And so I just felt like, you know, if we could spruce it up and make it more accessible and actually make it something that people wanted to pick up while still complying with the legal requirements, that would be cool. And so actually I started looking at the integrated reports from other companies that had done it because we certainly weren't the first in the U.S. But as everybody knows, you know, I feel like this has been going on in Europe for a long time, maybe Asia as well. And so there's some really slick, well done reports from other countries. I remember I think SAP was one and, you know, because of the IIRC that turned us on to the companies that had done a really good job of it. I think Novo Nordisk might have been another one. And we sort of started looking at those and also seeing some of our clients. I remember the Crown Estates, I think, is one, which is a big client of ours that was we're doing integrated reporting because we're, we're two thirds of our revenue is outside the United States. So we're a very international company. And so you know, it felt like that would be a cool thing. Well, to spruce up our 10K was a noble goal. And then maybe we could use it more internally and maybe we could use it more with clients and investors, you know, would get more interested in it. And actually maybe some, um, uh, 
you know, would help us tell our story to clients and have something to sort of talk about. And then also, we just like being a thought leader. Honestly, it's good for marketing for us. It gets our name out there. Um, and so this was just another organization that was, you know, doing things that we were interested in that could help us, but where we could, you know, f sort of for free, we get our name out, meet other smart people. You know, so a lot of things just coalesced around this being a worthwhile thing to spend some time on that we would learn something, people would hear about us um, and all of that. So, you know, everything kind of came together as just a good thing to do. Well, that's a great introduction. Um, while we're videotaping, I think what we'll do is we'll jump in and, and kind of uh, move around your reports a little bit to share with people um, your approach. So, um, you know, this, as you, as we said, is like the basic about us page for the uh, global um, uh, presence of JLL. And then you have this link to the integrated report, which I have up here. And um, you take an interesting approach on the on your integrated report and if you'd explain how you view this as you explain it to me as like a portal right because if you go back one just to the other the first page mm -hmm. you know, the problem that u.s companies have and i don't know how you know if anybody can solve this one day because i feel like european companies really do put out a big integrated report and that's the one they print and that everybody sees in the u.s at least on our schedule it's almost impossible to do that in the sense that, you know, we have to file our 10K by the end of February. We don't do our annual meeting until May, so our proxy doesn't get filed until April. And then we're always working on our sustainability report, which doesn't get out until the summer if we're lucky. So we sort of have to wait. I mean, one of the logistical problems for us is we have all these pieces, and that's what you know, you can see obviously our annual report. I mean, every company has to, public company has to do this, so it's no great rocket science for us. Yeah. Our proxy statement, you know, we put out corporate facts and then we just have other documents. Our sustainability report is there with the swimmer on it. Um, and then just other stuff that we want to put out about our safety program and, you know, our human trafficking policy and things that clients ask us about. So that's what we have on the page. But then we said, well, if we're going to do a true integrated report, like we have all the pieces, it's just how do we bring that together? And we've actually never completely cracked the code because, as you can see, we still only have our 2016 integrated report <laughs> put up here. It's already 2018. But we sort of feel like we can't do our 2017 report until we have our full 2017 results, which we just published literally today. So that's always been a little bit of a quandary, but we thought, well, let's just try this anyway and, you know, see where it takes us. So once we get all our other documents done, we have a design firm that, um, you know, in the first year or two of this was tougher going. Now it's pretty easy, but they took, you know, in the red bars, if you go up there and you yeah. sort of click on any one of those, you know, those are all the pieces that the document, the pages that come from these other reports that we have to do. So we tried to make this easy so we weren't recreating this, obviously, or rewriting it. So our strategy was, and again, this isn't as good of an integrated report as you would get from SAP or somebody, and I fully admit that. But we, we couldn't start over, and we, you know, didn't have an unlimited budget for this. So we just really sort of take the pages from all these other documents reorganize them and sort of put them in here verbatim but they look different you know we get it redesigned and so if you click on any one of those subheadings in the red you know like in governance you can get our executive compensation right so those are the pages from our proxy statement um, you know and we've got information obviously directors and officers and so forth and then you know if you go to performance that would be our financial performance um, somewhere in here we've got you know, stuff from our sustainability report. Right, I think like down here, maybe people, um, communities, yeah. right? Yeah. So we all, we brought it all together. This document we just do online, so we don't print any of these. You know, our annual report, we have to print. We used to print 10,000, now we print about 1,000, so we feel good about that, because most of our distribution is online now. The stock exchange still makes us print 
you know, if anybody wants one. And, but anyway, this thing we don't print at all, but it's obviously available and we try to do some communicating around when it comes out so people can see it and we try to, you know, talk it up with investors. It's just an easy place, but we sort of, we, we think of it as a portal to all the rest of our documents and, and you know, kind of reorganized. So that's the approach we've taken. Great. So I'd like just because we're talking about integrated reporting, um, show that you, uh, in, on, you know, in this section about reporting, you actually um, do a table, you know, people are more accustomed to seeing this like for GRI and, and other reporting schemes, but um, you actually have the uh, references about where you have different sources of information. So I think that's fun to see. Um, one of the other things I wanted to point out, you had this um, under um, strategy and goals, you've got the creating value section. And here's, um, you got this little diagram that kind of reference, also references the integrated reporting um, idea of inputs and outputs. So I don't know if this was new for 2016 or have you been using this kind of approach from the beginning, Mark? Well, we've used it from when we started, you know, getting involved with the uh, integrated reporting ideas and we, mm -hmm. we took their, they put out, a, as everybody on the phone knows, I'm sure they, you know, they put out an excellent guidebook, you know, on how to talk about the capitals and all that stuff. So I remember we, spent a fair amount of time with that and tried to take what we could that you know we thought applied to us and put it into our reporting. So this kind of table, the, the integrated report itself, we've only been doing for a couple, two or three years, but we, a number of years ago, we started just in our 10K, in our sustainability report, we started to try to bring to life some of those principles and talk about the capitals and, you know, just use that as a framework to talk about our business, which you know I still think is really, really helpful. You know, you mentioned the capitals. I'm going to jump over because you have some things in your sustainability report that aren't in the integrated report, but that um, kind of more directly um, address some, you know, some of the capitals. So you know, if you see here, clients, people, workplaces, communities. So that gets to some of the um, you know, the non-financial capitals. Um, there was another thing. You've got the sustainable development goals as well. You talk about integrated reporting here. Um, this was kind of a fun one that I thought, um, you know, how we create value in our business model. So it's Similar, it's a, it's a deeper level one, if you will, from the one we just saw in the integrated report. Right. And this actually was really compelling, this idea and our sustainability reporting team really got into this. And actually they've, in a good way, really taken it over from, you know, me and the legal team, uh, which is probably always where it should have been anyway. But um, you know, it, it just galvanizes them. They get a few good trips a year. You know, it's nice. They're sort of, it's always hard for people in that business to find sort of like-minded um, people who, you know, who want to talk about this stuff. And, you know, so it's been a really nice um, thing for them and they've, they've really gotten into it. And, and so this, and it helps them, you know, talk about our company and think about all these pieces, which again, I do think helps us think about um, everything you need to be a successful organization. And, and it actually helps people who do, you know, like the stuff I do, which is more corporate support, because in any business, and ours is no different, right, the sort of big shots are the ones who bring in the revenue, but everybody needs to remember the ones who protect the place from risks and do the accounting and the, you know, the the sort of nuts and bolts stuff are still very important and actually you can't live without them. And the, you know, all the, the importance of our people and cause that's all we do. We're a pure service business. Um, so that's our most important capital, no doubt. Um, and you know, it just helps us 
talk about all that in a in a sort of more holistic way, which I think has been really compelling. At least, and our clients are asking for this. I mean, you know, this is really com- it's it's a requirement now for our kind of business because people hire us to run their real estate, among other things. Not we also buy and sell it, but a, a lot of our business is being in people's own office space or the buildings they own. And so they do a lot of diligence on us and they want to know who they're dealing with. And so, you know, this is all for all of us in business. We we get asked all these things now. And so we have to have a good story to tell. 